If lupus is reversible, why aren't more doctors talking about it? This video is all about debunking myths surrounding lupus care and recovery. We're gonna talk about the top four reasons why lupus patients do not get the help that they need to reverse their symptoms for good. Hi, I'm Dr. Chanu Dasri, board certified surgeon specializing in reversing immune inflammation caused by gut microbiome dysfunction. Over the past 13 years, I've seen thousands of success stories from patients and clients who were able to rid themselves of inflammation for good. We've had people around the world in every time zone utilize the knowledge and protocols from our coaching program in clinic to achieve amazing results and reverse lupus inflammation for good. This video will dive into some very important information that's often left out of discussions about lupus. We'll also go over the top four reasons why this knowledge isn't widely known. Number one, doctors still blame genetics. This is what I call the knowledge gap. Studies have shown that gut microbiome dysfunction is the major contributor for the inflammation seen in conditions like lupus. Here's a 2021 study that highlights the role of gut microbiome imbalances and metabolic changes in the development of systemic lupus erythematosus. And this other 2024 study explores how gut microbiota imbalances, including expansions of certain species, can disrupt the gut barrier, causing leaky gut, which drives autoimmune diseases like lupus. There's also evidence that factors like diet, digestion, sleep, stress, and exercise play a significant role in managing inflammation from systemic lupus. Here's a 2023 study that evaluates the influence of dietary factors on the regulation of epigenetic modifications, which can positively impact patients with SLE. Here's a 2023 study that evaluates how behavioral type support and modification helps SLE patients live healthier, better lives, less stress. Even with all of these studies, many doctors still focus solely on genetics when it comes to lupus, as though genetics alone determine the outcome. But here's the truth. Most people with lupus have had the same genes long before they had developed any of the symptoms. So what's really causing the shift? The answer lies in bacterial genomics, the genetic material of the bacteria in your gut which has a far greater impact than human genetics. This is one of the key concepts I cover in our membership course. Here's a preview. Even though there are dozens of human genes, recall that I said that these genes could be turned on and off depending on how you behave and respond to triggers. And what are these environmental triggers? These environmental triggers are diet, digestion, sleep, stress, and exercise, the big five. The typical story we hear from most doctors is that genetics cause inflammation, but let me add to this story. Every cell in the body has a nucleus, which contains DNA. This DNA provides the recipe book for various functions in the body, including inflammation. So the genes are the recipe book of sorts. And if you take this recipe book to, let's say, a bakery, they make scones. If you take it to a cafe, they may make soup. So the same recipe book in different parts of the body provides the instructions for different things. External influences greatly impact what gene recipes are being used in each cell. So this leads to two very important points. One, just because you have a gene, it doesn't mean it's always turned on. In fact, it can remain off until the right time. Second, not every cell in the body uses every gene. The important takeaway here is that whether or not you have quote unquote good genes or bad genes that cause inflammation, they're not always on. You have the ability to control them. But what you need to learn is how. And that's where many doctors fall short. They don't tell you how. They're so quick to blame genetics and prescribe medication that they don't think for a second that perhaps there's a way to control whether a gene is turned on or off. And that's precisely what we're gonna teach in this course. Okay, now would be a good time to mention, so far we've been talking about human genes, and that can be turned on and off. But remember that our body is also host to billions of microbes. These microbes harbor their own sets of DNA, which can cause inflammatory metabolites. Some of these microbes help us, but some of them harm us. And the correct balance is what we seek. Believe it or not, if we take the sum total of all the genes in our body, only 1% is actually human. The other 99% come from bacteria and other microbes, mostly living in our intestines and airways. For the people that like to blame genetics, 
you may not even have terrible genetics. Your genetics may be just fine. You may just have a bacterial imbalance, and that's what's causing a significant problem. Again, this is another thing that most doctors don't talk about. And here, you have ever-changing ratio of good versus bad bacteria. So let me give you a few examples. We've seen this with depression. We've seen it with obesity. We've seen this with IBS. We see it with inflammatory bowel disease and other autoimmune conditions such as lupus, rheumatoid, MS, psoriasis, eczema, and chronic allergies. In each of these conditions, bad bacteria plays a significant role. So you have to get rid of them and replace them with good bacteria. Number two, doctors don't know about the healing power of phytonutrients for lupus. Phytonutrients are incredibly powerful for managing lupus, but what are they and why are they so important? When we develop a phytonutrient-focused diet for our clients, we always take into account their specific nutritional needs and any conditions that could be influenced by herbal medicines or natural supplements. Not everything shared online is effective or even safe, and our goal is actually to limit the use of unnecessary supplements and focus on obtaining essential nutrients through diet. Micronutrients like vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients are the foundation of this approach, while macronutrients, which include carbs, fats, and proteins, are also crucial. Balancing these nutrients properly each day can help resolve metabolic challenges and reduce lupus-related inflammation. However, if the ratios are off, healing may not happen, and that's why addressing these variables is crucial. I also have an entire video on the ideal diet for lupus, so don't forget to check it out on this channel. Number three, this is an important one. Doctors do not have the time needed to successfully coach patients. How many of you have gone to the doctor only to spend 15 minutes with them? They focus entirely on ordering tests, prescribing medications, then referring you for consultations. But where's the discussion about diet, digestion, sleep, exercise, trauma, supplements, or lifestyle adjustments. It's not there. In our clinic's coaching program, the approach is entirely different. On average, we communicate with each coaching client 200 to 300 times in just the first weeks of the program, and this is a level of commitment you simply won't find in typical doctor's offices. We track everything, symptoms, food, sleep, weight, exercise, even bowel movements and poop every single day. And this attention to detail is crucial for managing and reversing lupus inflammation. Overlooking even one small factor can hinder your healing progress. The unfortunate truth is that the medical community isn't designed to offer this kind of care. Doctors don't have the time. They see you for a short appointment, order some tests, write some prescriptions, and schedule a follow-up months later. And this is why many people with lupus struggle to get better. Most doctors assume it's impossible to reverse lupus inflammation, but the reality is it can be done. That takes me to number four. There is an over-reliance on medication and an underappreciation of side effects and alternatives. Doctors often rely on randomized controlled trials to guide treatment for lupus, and these trials are considered the gold standard in medical research. But they're incredibly expensive, sometimes costing millions of dollars to conduct, and pharmaceutical companies typically fund these trials because they have a financial stake. So just to be clear, I'm not against medications. Pharmaceuticals are essential for managing lupus and have been life-changing for many patients. My concern is about how treatment options are communicated. The therapies that succeeded in these clinical trials get most of the attention, while alternatives are often ignored. Unfortunately, natural remedies, dietary approaches, probiotics, and herbal treatments rarely have the financial support to fund large-scale trials. And as a result, these options are often overlooked. Just think about it. When was the last time you saw a commercial for broccoli or some other type of nutrition-rich diet or anti-inflammatory food for lupus? In some cases, even discussing these alternatives is restricted. I've seen colleagues labeled as misinformation for simply sharing natural approaches to lupus. So while protecting patients from scams is critical, this cautious stance has also stifled legitimate conversations about effective alternatives. And it's not about bad intentions. I think everybody's trying to do their best for patients, but the deeply ingrained belief that medication is the best or only solution for lupus makes it challenging for other options to gain recognition. As a Western trained surgeon, I've successfully used medications and surgeries to help patients. But I also know that there are other effective ways to manage and even reverse lupus, methods that are underutilized in the medical profession. I hope this video has shed some light on the topic and I know how frustrating it can be when your doctor doesn't offer information about alternative solutions. And that's why I offer discovery calls to help answer these questions and explore the best options for each individual. If you or someone you know is struggling with lupus, share this video with them. It might be the step that they need to find relief and healing. Lastly, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content such as this. 
This is Dr. Chanu Dasri with the MindGut Immunity Clinic, and I'll see you next time.